Tina C. Lowell Sanders. Mark my words. First, Danny Bevins. From Lent this year, I gave up hope. <laughs> that wasn't working out. People, some people can't wait to be an asshole. I've seen people heckle the homeless. <laughs> what? Just walk by a homeless guy, get a job! <laughs> like they're expecting the homeless guy to go, oh, that's what I fucking forgot. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, you would have thought one of the voices in my head would remind me. <laughs> you gotta appreciate the homeless. I lived in New York City. You haven't lived until you've heard one homeless guy tell another homeless guy, you need to get your shit together. <laughs> You guys go ahead. I'm gonna watch this intervention unfold. I want to see if Slinky knows he's hit rock bottom. <laughs> it's a reality show waiting to happen. I don't know why they don't use the homeless on the reality shows. They need contestants. Who better? If you're gonna drop some shallow bitch on an island, I want that island filled with homeless guys. <laughs> you gotta date them all, find out which one's just lazy. How about that? <laughs> I'd like to see how long those dates last. She's sitting across from a guy going, ar, 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 oh, I want to go home. Yeah, but if you'll sleep with one, we'll give you a million dollars. Okay. <laughs> get a job. That's what they said to the homeless guy. Get a job. Not get a bath, you know? <laughs> get some counseling. Get that shit out of your hair. You can't go to a job interview smelling like that. <laughs> we don't go to a job interview smelling like that. We go to a job interview smelling like we give a shit. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> but we smell like we do. You ever been on a job interview and in the middle of the interview you realize you don't want that fucking job? <laughs> That's freedom. <laughs> now you can say whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need a hundred grand. I'm gonna need that upfront and cash. I got a little wager to make. Get a job. They say it like it's easy. I mean, they're easy jobs to get, but those jobs suck. If you could start the same day you fill out an application, that job's gonna blow. <laughs> they got books on how to get a job. They all say the same thing too. You gotta sell yourself which is the problem because most of us know ourselves and given the opportunity, we wouldn't fucking buy us, you know? <laughs> no. i like to upgrade. You got something in a sporty version? A little bit bigger payload. Sort of an extended cab, if you know what I mean. Get a job. You have to, you know? Most of us hate our jobs. Right? The hardest we ever work is that first couple of days we were there. Because <laughs> that's the important time, because you got to know your job. You got to learn everything about your job. Then you got to learn everybody else's job around you. Not so you can be a better employee, but so you can tell people, hey, that's not my fucking job. <laughs> I don't do that. That's Bill's job. Two cubicles down. Yeah, you turned right a little early now, didn't you? <laughs> Cubicles. Whoever came up with that idea should be raped and hung, don't you think? <laughs> Built a human hamster farm. Have you seen it? People scurrying from cubicle to cubicle. Hey, hey, my cubicle. You walk past her and hit the computer like it's a feeder bar. Ah, ah, ah. I had a friend of mine tell me, you know, it's a lot like a zoo. <laughs> no, it's not. Let me tell you something. You let the animals go from the zoo at the end of the day, they're not fucking coming back tomorrow. <laughs> I always liked physical labor, you know? People look down on physical labor, but at the end of the day, when you got a physical job, you're tired. When you hit the rack, you go to sleep. It's those jobs with no physical labor and that'll screw you up. You're laying in bed at night, staring at the ceiling. I should have told that fucker to fuck off. You know? <laughs> jobs like customer service. Ooh, you ever done that job? I did it for six months. That job fucking blows. <laughs> I would rather be the fluffer on a gay porno set. I don't give a shit. There's no upside to that job at all. Everyone is pissed off at you. 
that job should come with a cattle prod, you know, so you could zap people back into reality. <laughs> what the hell was that? Well, now you got a different fucking problem, don't you? <laughs> and a little red mark to go with it. <laughs> I did it for an airline. Their definition of customer service was, don't give them shit. <laughs> like, what? I felt like the UN. I'm like, look, I'm just supposed to stand here. I'd like to help you, but they won't let me. You want some peanuts? You like my pretty blue hat? A homeless person came up to me yesterday and said, I haven't eaten in two days. I said, you should try and force yourself. There's some good restaurants around here. In London. <laughs> I always want to do stuff, but uh, I, I think to do it, and I, I, never, I never actually say it. Like, you know, when there's a knock on the door and someone's standing there going, we're from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So I want to say, good, come back later in the day when I'm not here. That's when I like to hear about Jesus. Or well, if a friend knocks on the door and I say, who's there? And they say, it's me. I'd like to say, it can't be me, I'm in here. It must be you. You confuse yourself with me again. Go home and sort yourself out. Or go to court as a witness for the prosecution when the... The lawyer says, can you point out the perpetrator for the benefit of the court? Say, yeah, that's him. Point to the judge. <laughs> Recognise that stupid looking wig anywhere. <laughs> or when you go in a supermarket and you go up to someone asking where something is because you think they work there, and you have them turn around and say, sorry, I don't work here. People get embarrassed by that. I like to turn the tables and say, well, you do look like the sort of dumb fuck that would work in a supermarket. <laughs> You've got this bland clothing on they all wear. Look at your head, for Christ's sake. You've got spots. <laughs> I just find the cotton buds on my own. I'd like to follow around someone with Tourette's syndrome, carrying a swear jar. <laughs> or pull up at traffic lights beside a woman who's closed the door in a dress and parlor dress is hanging out the door. Get out of my car with a pair of scissors, cut that parlor dress off, then knock on the window and say, you left this outside. <laughs> or drive around the streets looking for a couple of Mormons going door to door and go to the door before the door they're at knocking it. Say, there's Mormons coming quickly. Hi, turn out your light and don't answer the door. And keep going one door ahead of them all the way up the street. I'd like to get on the train of a morning during peak hour, wait for women to sit next to me and start putting on her makeup, pretend I can't see her. And then when she's finished, turn her and say, thank Christ you sat down. You should have seen how ugly the woman was who was sitting there a minute ago. <laughs> Or well, if there's people on the train who can't wait, they get in their job in the city and they've got to start tapping away on their little laptop computers before they get into their cubicle, I like to make them feel like they're part of an office atmosphere and walk over to them with a biscuit tin and say, it's a train driver's birthday and everyone's putting in five bucks. <laughs> or use an ATM machine and when someone comes up behind me, say, oh, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. You go before me and I'll just watch what you're doing. <laughs> I'd love to go up to a midget and say, I've had enough to hear with you people. <laughs> Being paranoid about us normal sized people making fun of you all the time. I'll break up with my girlfriend, but do it gently, do it softly so I don't hurt her feelings. It's not you, it's me. I don't like you. <laughs> I'd like to steal all the roses out of my next door neighbour's garden, send them to her at work with a card saying, from a secret admirer of your garden. <laughs> I'll write the first ever romantic erotic novel for men and call it I Fuck That Slut from the Pub. <laughs> not quite Mills and Boone, but in that genre. Or open up my own theme restaurant in America, just down from Hooters, and call it Twats. <laughs> I'd like to go to a nightclub, spike my own drink, and then go home and fuck myself. <laughs> or when a chick says, I wouldn't have sex with you if you were the last person on earth. Say, if I was the last person on earth, you wouldn't be alive and you wouldn't have any say in it. <laughs> I'd like to interrupt important volleyball matches at nudist camps by streaking across the field in a three-piece suit. Or go to tennis and watch it the exact opposite way to everyone else. <laughs> I'd like to take off all my clothes, completely cover my body in nicotine patches, walk into a backness and say, just browsing. <laughs> or go in a shop, get a bottle of water out of the fridge, take it over the counter, plonk it down, say, just this £2.50 bottle of water, thanks. Oh, and do you have any fresh air today? Perhaps I should purchase a few kilos of sunlight for the weekend. <laughs> or go in a supermarket on a Friday evening, lay up the trolley with all the toilet paper on special, get in line, say to the person behind me, Oh, I'm going to do some shitting this weekend. <laughs> i got the bathroom to myself all weekend. I'm just going to stay home and shit. <laughs> I'll go up to an old lady about to cross the street and say, let me help you across. And when the green walk sign comes on, you ought to move, quickly, hurry up, quicker. <laughs> I'll get a thick text and go up to one of those lost notices people put on telegraph poles or shop windows that says, did you see Mitzi? And underneath the photo of the poodle, right, yes, but I didn't have time to put the brakes on. <laughs> 
I'll stick my own bits of paper on telegraph poles saying, lose weight now, ask me how, with my phone number. When people ring up, say, get off your fat fucking ass and do some exercise, stupid. <laughs> That'll be 50 bucks. Well, you're going to punch my head in, all right, we'll walk over. When I get here, they won't be home. I won't answer the door. You can walk back home. That's another 50 bucks. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. I tell you what, no matter how much you travel or wherever you go, man, all hotels are the same. I'm staying in a nice hotel, but you can still hear people in the next room. You know, you hear that bed squeaking. <laughs> I hate when that happens, and I'm alone. You can have fun though in the morning, you open your door, hey! You always hear women, you never hear the guys, you know, women, guys, we just do what we gotta do. Women like to play with us afterwards, too. Like, that don't hurt, do it. <laughs> nah, 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 we all right. Just tie me to the back of a car and drag me. <laughs> I'm from Detroit, Michigan, home of Motown music. Yeah, y'all love Motown here, man. Shit. That's all I've been hearing. Motown. Music ain't like it used to be. Music has changed. Like 50 Cent. That's how you say his name, 50. <laughs> I like when white people say his name. 50 Cent, how about that 50 Cent? <laughs> I like 50 Cent. Why does he sell himself so cheap? Why? <laughs> it's 50. 50 Cent been shot nine times. He used to be $2. <laughs> now he's 50 Cent. He gets shot a couple more times, he ain't worth shit. <laughs> he gonna be a plug nickel. But rappers are smart, you know what they do? They get their own clothing lines. That's right, they all get their own clothing line. Puff Daddy, well, P. Diddy, changed his name when he was on trial to P. Diddy, because evidently you can't go to jail with a name like Puff Daddy. <laughs> you might go, but you'll come out Puff Mommy or some shit like that. <laughs> but he has his own clothing line, man. When I get famous, I want my own clothing line. I have the name and everything. I'm gonna call it mine. Cheap shit. <laughs> Check out how we gonna spell it. C-H-P-S-H-T. Yeah, because we too cheap to buy a fucking vial. That's how cheap this shit gonna be. Because <laughs> rappers can't spell anyway. Rappers can't spell. You'll never see a rapper in a spelling bee. <laughs> they all spelled it J-Z, J-A-Y-Z. Eminem, Eminem, the easiest name you can write, Eminem. The way he spelled it looks like enema. You ever seen how he write it? <laughs> I thought he was a laxative for about a year. <laughs> Eminem, the number one rapper in the world. <laughs> yeah? Got a number one movie one time, he had a Grammy. I, remember when rap was black? Huh? Remember when golf was white? Huh? Remember when titties was real hot? Y'all remember any of this shit? I can't tell real titties from fake titties no more. I don't care. I don't care if you got plastic. When I was growing up, I had a big wheel and it was all plastic. And I love that big wheel. I rode that shit every day, man. I don't care. I went in Victoria's Secrets, found out what the secret is. Women making it look like you got shit you don't have. How many bras do you need? Wonder bras, water bras, miracle bras. Wonder bras, that's false advertisement. Guys, we don't have nothing. If you got a little dick, you just got a little dick. <laughs> Ain't no one to jock. Water jock. 
Miracle Jack. <laughs> hey, Bob, look at this push up jack. Look at this shit. <laughs> shit, if they had a wonder jack, every white guy in here would have one. <laughs> <laughs> Couple guys look like, mm, let's put. <laughs> it's a joke. I don't know what your dicks look like. Some black guys have little dicks. Yeah, they're in the circus. <laughs> Right next to the little ponies. They always put them next to the little ponies. Oh, man. It don't matter what you have. It's how you use it. Yep. Know who say that? Guys with little dicks. Oh, my God. Hi. How y'all going here? Oh, my gosh. Look at you. Come on. Let's have a yee-haw. Come on. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. I was worried there would not be any white trash in the room, but <laughs> needing to worry. <laughs> now, my name is Tennessee. I'm a country singer from Nashville. You will know me from my best-selling album, No Dick Is As Hard As My Life. <laughs> Dicks as hard as my life had some wonderful songs on it. Songs like, of course I want you for your body. I got a mind of my own. Hell yeah. And uh, I thought it'd be pretty if we had some country music in here tonight. Would you like that? Sure yeah. Oh my gosh, thank you. That's so pretty. Now, I'm a long way from home. Oh my gosh, let me just kind of, ooh. Wow. Wow, that you thought that wasn't going to go over my head, didn't you? <laughs> but most things do. So, I want to sing you this song. This is from my follow-up record. It's a beautiful album called Complete and Utter Country. And... <laughs> yeehaw, hell yeah. Thank you. Listen to you go. We're birthing a cowgirl up there. <laughs> That's real pretty. <laughs> That's beautiful, ma'am, sir. Whatever. <laughs> this is a song about falling in love too deep. This was a double A side with a great song called I'm Just Roadkill on the Freeway of Your Love. <laughs> you gotta love a power ballad, don't you? So this is about falling in love too deep. I sing it for everybody who's ever suffered, who's ever been there at 5 a.m. holding a small dog in your arms. <laughs> and you know that that little dog is not going to see the morning light. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you suffered. I'm talking pain and suffering. I feel your pain. Beautiful. So here we go. My mama and all my friends, they tell me My love for you is too strong They tell me that I should find a way to love you a little less, do myself a little less ha ha. <laughs> so I became schizophrenic, <laughs> so I could love you twice as much. <laughs> yes, I'm an emotional cripple and I. Just need your crutch. <laughs> Don't need heavy sedation. Both of me just take to give you my love. I feel no pain. <laughs> I became a so I could love you twice as much. <laughs> Hell no, insanity. Don't bother me. Just wear my hair a little different. After my full frontal lobotomy. Well, you need to have your French. You know what I'm talking about? You gotta hide those scars now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I became in some branding so I could love you twice as much. You stop me and I'm all done. I just need your crutch to contain my love. I'll keep splitting. I'm an amoeba, watch my binary fission. I know it's a great line, isn't it? <laughs> no need to tell me. I know. 
You always said you wanted three in the bed. <laughs> so I became schizophrenic so I could love you twice as mine. I said, what's love but everyday insanity? 100% free special offer, split personality. What's love but everyday insanity? Hey, everybody, should we all sing the last line together? Let's make it pretty for Jesus. Come on. <laughs> I became skits. So why love you twice? And that was like a little angel choir. Thank you. <laughs>